Hey there! Today we'll have a look at this pen. This pen was sent to me by Patrick, and I rather enjoy it because it's an interesting pen. Uh, it's clearly a sailor, and um, that's the pen. Here's the box. Uh, there is some paperwork in there, and I'm fairly certain it came with a cartridge, but uh, Patrick sent it to me because he enjoyed my video so much, and again, I'm, of course, I'm very grateful for that. Uh, here we have the pen, and this is a Sailor 1911 large, large or full size, um, and as you can see, it's a very nice color. It's a burgundy color, which I enjoy a lot. I'm going to cover the parts of the pen. I'll tell you what I like about it, what I don't like about it, and then I'll do a writing sample. All right, let's start at the top of the pen. Finial, uh, there isn't really anything there, which is a good thing because I have a Montblanc 146 in the same color, and they really look alike. So it's nice that this one doesn't have anything on top there. It makes it easy to distinguish the two. Here we have a um, gold clip, or at least gold plated, or gold trim, or gold colored. In any case, there's not really any writing on there or anything. There is writing on the center band. It says, Fountain, so Sailor Japan founded 1911, hence the name. And then you have the barrel. All right. I'll unscrew the the cap there. And this pen comes with a relatively interesting nib. This is not one of the standard nibs, fine, medium, or broad. This is one of the more fancy uh, Salem nibs. And I'll talk about that a bit more in a second. But first, I'll just show it to you. This is the Naginata Togi nib in medium. It's 21 karat gold nib. Writes smoothly and it definitely has a bit of spring to it. And the pen is fed by cartridges or this converter. Okay, before I go on about what I like about it and not really like about it, a little bit about the Naginata Togi nib. This is, Sailor has a, a pretty impressive range of specialty nibs. I was going to say odd nibs, but that doesn't really do it justice. Uh, there are special, there are specialty nibs designed for all kinds of purposes. And the idea of the Naginata Togi nib, this is the medium. They also come in fine and broad. Is that you get wider lines depending on the writing angle. So the more you go up, the finer the line gets, and the more you go down, the broader the line gets. Now it's a little hard to see, but there are, there should be three facets which really sort of allow you to uh, maximize. Uh, that line variation. It's also a nib that is a bit springy, so it offers some line variation by adding pressure to it. And that makes it comparable and yet a bit different from the zoom nib. I've reviewed a 1911 large black version with a zoom nib, and that too is a nib that will give you broader lines when you put it close to the paper and finer lines when you put it almost perpendicular to the paper. However, that nib does not have flex to it. There is no springiness in that nib. It's very rigid. This nib does have the springiness and also the zoom will not give you um, line variation when you use the nib perpendicularly. <clears throat> so don't, when you're not right with it like this, but you write more, uh, well, oblique. Um, I said perpendicular, I meant oblique, sorry. Uh, so this, I will show you that in the writing sample, that that's something that this nib does and that makes it a little uh, special that you can use it in these different uh, configurations. It's complicated matter. There's an excellent post on Fountain Pen Network that uh, is called something like um, uh, Zoom Nib versus Naginata Togi Nib or something, and that really explains the differences between the two nibs in quite some detail and also shows writing samples of the two nibs, which I found very, very helpful. So that's excellent. Um, that's the pen. I think what we need to see is a writing sample, but first let me briefly cover what I like about it, what I don't like about it. These pens are not extremely cheap, although they're not necessarily huge bang breakers. There are considerably more expensive pens out there, although this is a specialty nib which drives up the price a bit, and apparently these nibs are hand-tuned, uh, making them a little bit more expensive too. Um, I like the color. It's not a black one, but actually this burgundy, I like that a lot. I like the design of the pen, very classy and nice uh, design. It's, it's, I don't find this a spectacular design. We've seen this a lot, but I, I do like it. Uh, it's a very nice size. I like this more than the, uh, the regular size 1911. The large is a bit more 
uh, has a bit more length to it, which I appreciate, given the size of my hands. Um, I like all of that. I like the nib. It's a very fascinating nib to use. And I'll show you that. It's easier to show you than to try to explain all of that. Things I don't like about it. Relatively light pen, but that's what you get when you have a pen made of this type of material. It's very little metal on there. What I also don't really like is this uh, converter. Uh, the Sailor converters, I, I've discussed that before. They're really quite narrow and they don't hold a huge amount of ink. So if you do a lot of writing, especially if you have a somewhat broader nib, like the Zoom nib, I can easily empty the converter with maybe an hour of writing and it's gone when I use it with my Zoom nib. So that to me is not very attractive. Having said all of that, I think it's a very fascinating pen, definitely a fun pen to play around with, and I think we need to see it in action. That's what we're going to do next. I hope this was useful. Patrick, thanks a lot for sending me this pen. I very much appreciate it. It's a lot of fun to, to play around with. So thanks a lot. Writing up next. Hope this was useful, and I'll gladly see you later. Bye-bye. Okay, so here we go. There we go. With... The Sailor 1911 Large and the Naginata Togi Nib. This is normal writing, I would say normal writing angle. Oh, by the way, the ink is um, um, Shizuko Yama Budo. Okay, fast writing. These nibs, in my experience, the Sailor nibs, are not the type of nibs that are buttery smooth. They give feedback, um, but they are very pleasant. It's not at all scratchy feedback. It's just you feel that you're writing, which is not at all bad. Okay, wetness, well, that depends a little bit on the writing angle, which I'll show you in a second. It's not exactly super dry, it's just a well-tuned nib, I would say. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the pen pretty much perpendicular to the paper, and I'm going to get closer and closer to the paper. All right, then you can see the line variation. So you can see you get a very thin line like this, You can see that it uh, it increases in line width because this is what you get perpendicular to the paper. That's not really realistic because nobody really writes like that, I think. But this would be a pretty steep angle, and then this is a much shallower angle. And you can see that you get a, a somewhat wider line. I don't find the um, the amount of line variation insanely impressive. I think you get more line, I get more line variation out of my um, uh, zoom nib. I'm just going to prime the feet a little bit there, just see if I can get a little bit juicier. Maybe that will do something. Um, but, there we go. So here, I'm applying as little pressure as I can. Now you see that the line variation is a little bit more pronounced. And there should also be an effect in obliqueness, which you can see there. There are facets, so if you hold the pen, I have to hold it like this, and put it almost flat on the paper, then you see these nice broad lines as compared to that. Okay, so I had to prime the feet a little bit, sorry about that. Um, I'm still experimenting a lot with this nib. As I'm not, I'm not, I can't do Asian calligraphy. So it's entirely possible that if you do ideograms, uh, you will, it will be more natural to you to, to um, manipulate the pen. In all, I think you get a very interesting amount of line variation because this is almost like a felt tip pen and it almost feels like a felt tip pen, whereas this is a much more normal writing angle. I wrote hell, but I wanted to write hello, sorry. Now, the final thing I wanted to show you is the flexiness. This is no line variation. I'm going to keep the angle of writing consistent. I'm just going to exert more pressure. 
You can't really do this with a zoom nib. The zoom nib will uh, not really, the tines are not really spread open. The final thing you can do is reverse writing, which depending on the angle also give you a somewhat wider or narrower line, but it's actually quite smooth and quite pleasant. So, Patrick, Patrick, thanks again for sending me this pen. I much appreciate it. It's a lot of fun to play around with. Um, thanks a lot. And guys, to all of you, thanks a lot for watching. I hope you enjoyed this, and uh, I'll gladly see you later. Bye-bye.